times people ask the question, does romantic love exist in Islam? What does it look like? And what does it not look like? So what I want to do actually is I want to tell, um, begin by, a, by, by telling a story. And it's actually a story um, which is a true story, although the names are changed in this story. Um, I'm going to begin with this story and then I'm going to talk about the lesson that we can really learn from this story because it's actually a story that a lot of us may be able to relate to in one way or another. Now, the story begins with a, a woman and when Sarah met Ahmed, she immediately knew. He was everything that she had always dreamed of. Meeting him was like watching the sun rise in the middle of a snowstorm. His warmth melted the cold but soon, admiration turned to worship. Before she could understand what had happened, Sara had become a prisoner. She became a prisoner of her own desire and craving for that which she adored. Everywhere she looked, Sara saw nothing but him. Her greatest fear in life was displeasing him. He was all she could feel, and without him, happiness had no meaning. Leaving him made her feel as though her soul was being peeled from her very being. Her heart was consumed with only his face, and nothing felt closer to her than him. He became to her like the blood in her very veins. And the pain of his existing without him was unbearable, because there was no happiness outside of being with him. But Sara thought she was in love. Everything basically revolved around him. Her greatest fear in life was displeasing him. And um, she, didn't, she didn't know any kind of um, basically pleasure outside of being with him. Now, here is the irony. Sara thought she was in love. Sara had been through a lot in her life. Her father walked out on her when she was a teenager. She ran away from home when she was 16. She battled drug and alcohol addictions. She even spent time in jail. But all of the pain combined could not compare to the pain that she would come to know inside this new prison of her own making. Sara became a captive inside her own desires. It was this captivity that Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, is one of the great classical scholars, spoke of when he said, the one who is truly imprisoned is the one whose heart is imprisoned from God and the captivated one is the one whose desires have enslaved him. The agony of Sara's worship of Ahmed was more intense than the agony of all her previous hardships. It consumed her but never filled her. And like a parched man in the middle of a desert, Sara was desperately pursuing a mirage. But what was worse was the torturous result of putting something in a place only God should be. Sada's story is so deep because it demonstrates a profound truth of existence. As human beings were created with a particular nature, and that nature is called fitra. That fitra is to recognize the oneness of God and to actualize this truth in our lives. Therefore, there is no calamity, no loss, no thing that will cause more pain to us than putting something equal to God in our lives or in our hearts. Shirk, on any level, breaks the human spirit like no worldly tragedy ever could.